dizzy from the flight, but uh, thanks for coming. So let me just put my timer. Okay, let's go. So I'm Nins. Um, the title of my talk would be, as again, I convinced my old high school to offer a pro Python programming class. And it's actually quite difficult. It's a difficult thing to do in the Philippines, and I'll just show you how we did it. Okay? Um, first, that's me. So I'm an MLOps engineer from Australia. So it's weird. <laughs> the topic is from the Philippines, but I'm from Australia. Anyway, I just, made, I just moved to Australia, but I'm still doing this volunteer work in the Philippines. Um, I'm a volunteer, programming advocate. I usually do data science, machine learning, software engineering. I love mountain bikes, I play Dota, and I love grass. Like, if, if I see a grass, I jump. Like, like that one, see? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm also a fan of Rick and Morty, if anyone is a fan of Rick and Morty, hi. So we're gonna discuss like uh, the Philippine education system, and then we're just gonna briefly discuss how, how it all started. Funny thing is, it started because of HTML. And like, how did we start a Python class, right? From nothing. Uh, the stuff we learned, or, oh sorry, stuff we learned, and that's supposed to be the conclusion. My roommate didn't edit my slide, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, the Philippine education system. This is my school, that is my old school. That's the school that we're gonna talk about, by the way. Um, for most of you who don't know, the Philippines has a K-12 program, like kinder, primary, and then junior high, senior high. And the thing is, the Philippines is full of islands, like patches of islands, and it's logistically challenging to implement a unified education system for everyone, right? Um, it was severely affected by the pandemic because the online learning system is not good. We don't have internet at some point, like in, in the Philippines, it's very difficult to get internet. So there's a big gap between tech and education in my case, right? When I was in high school, that's way back 2006, I'm sharing a computer with three other guys. And it's very difficult because even the teachers, they don't know how to use the computers back then. <laughs> They're like, you know, instructing us to do this and do that. So maybe only three out of the 15 sections have a computer class. And it, the, it's usually just the top section who learns how to do like your basic Fortran. Anyone knows, how, anyone knows Fortran or like COBOL? Those are really old languages. Um, it's very difficult. And something needs to be done, right? Because uh, it's just, it's very difficult for everyone going forward. Now, there have been some small steps. Um, there have been some dedicated computer labs throughout the years. I'm gonna show you later. Uh, schools have uh, hardware investments, some, some of them by Arduino. Actually, I gave them Arduino, so personal money going to schools, which is fine. Uh, students are actually getting better at uh, programming, learning on their own, which is kind of nice, right? So there's more steps. So this one is a class that I've taught. Um, as you can see, we have like a good amount of computers uh, right now, and um, we're, we're, we're on a good path. I think. But, but there's still a bigger problem, right? And there's actually a lack of technical knowledge in terms of like teaching. Like the teachers themselves don't know how to proceed with, you know, teaching students how to code, right? They lack trainings, they are overworked, and there's no clear incentive for them to do this on the extra time, right? So, it was difficult. Um, how did it happen? It started because of HTML. I think it was way back, oh, this, by the way, this is the place that I'm talking about, the, the red ones called Tayabas. There is, I think, around five high schools in there, and the school that we're gonna talk about is a Luis Palad Integrated High School. That's my old school, uh, and it's, I think, it's a good way to, you know, give back, right? So, way back in 2013, there was um, a teacher who messaged me. 
hey, Nins, can you come? Uh, we want to teach kids how to do websites. I'm like, oh, okay, sure, fine. He said, uh, how much? We're going to pay you. I said, um, do you have like bread? <laughs> I accept bread as payment. So yeah, basically my payment for this is like loaf of bread. <laughs> Three loaves of bread, I think. And I'm, I'm happy, right? <laughs> so this is the first class that um, happened, HTML Bootcamp. I'm so young back then. Uh, and then it, it went on until, you know, 2016. So I think every year we have classes going on. So uh, we do a one to two week HTML bootcamp. And then the goal was to create a website for the school, which didn't happen apparently because there was no support, right? I mean, come on. If you see a bunch of kids doing HTML, have you, have you used Friendster, anyone? <laughs> if you use Friendster, you definitely see what a bunch of kids will do to a website, right? Like all the queue, like the, the, I don't know, marquee thingy. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there was no definitive outcome. We had no support. The school said, you're just wasting our time. I said, fine. Now, back, back, at, the, back, back at those days, we, we try to remember there was actually, we need a stronger motivation for the schools, right? We just... We cannot show them results of just a few students doing HTML, random stuff on the website. That's not going to work. That's not going to cut it. So how did we actually start the Python class? 2016, I thought, it's, that's it. Done. I'm OK. I won't have anything to do with this school anymore. However, there's this, called, this, is, there's this thing called investigatory projects, right? Um, for those of you who don't know, it's like, it's like research, but for high school. So when, you're, when you do your college thesis and you know, research and stuff like that, but it's like that for high school. Back in the Philippines, we have that. Um, the thing is, it's actually quite good for the school to have these investigatory projects you know, published. Because you can join competitions. If you win those competitions, you get more budget. Now we're talking about money. So the schools are like, huh, oh, we want to win. We want to have, you know, budget and stuff like that. And I took this opportunity, right? Since they are incentivized, they have a drive to support it. What I did was, as you can see here, this is literally the first uh, coded project that we did back then. It was a, we, we bought a very old drone and we tried, yeah, it failed. <laughs> so, I think that's the first code that the students did, and I was like, I was like oh, okay, let's try this. But um, it's something. That, that how many lines of code right there? Technically, that's just, what, uh, around 40 lines of code? That started the whole Python programming class. That's it. They saw the potential of that drone, and they said, hey, maybe we can do this again, right? So from 2017 to 2019, we produced around 10 projects, maybe around something like that, 10, 12, uh, Arduino-based systems. We have monitoring systems. We, have, uh, we use Raspberry Pi. And then we have some basic machine learning applications. Can you, yeah, high school doing machine learning, right? So plant-based predictions, like seasons, you know, when, when the plant will be harvested, uh, Image processing, web apps, stuff like that. And it was good. So here, uh, as we go uh, over those, how many, 2017, 18, around three or four years, those are the students that joined competitions. Uh, I taught them how to use Arduino, we ported Python. Um, and yeah, school is seeing the result, so they're happy. But... <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> so I thought it's just going to be something like um, I'm going to enable them, teach them, and stuff like that. But it's not sustainable because they always say, oh, can you come back again, teach us? Can you come back again, teach us? And all they give is a loaf of bread. I'm like, something needs to happen, right? I cannot take bread for payment for the rest of my life. So I thought of something. But then, 
2020, pandemic hit. Everyone shut down and everyone is free. So in March, that's March 2020, I posted on my Facebook. Uh, I'm gonna translate it because some of it is in Tagalog. Basically, I asked them, hey guys, if anyone is interested in learning an online uh, Python programming online, you know, um, if you have like high school or college students interested, ping me, we can start it because we're all bored at home doing nothing, right? And to my surprise, there's a lot of response. So, on March 2020, oh, sorry, on April 2020, we unofficially started a class. Um, I asked for the teachers to, hey guys, can you come here at the class? We're gonna try to teach you, right? And then, um, I don't know, some college student heard that I'm gonna do that, so there are some college student and then some like two working professionals. My main goal is to teach the teachers programming so that they don't bother me anymore. And I'm a selfish person like that, right? But yeah, so I also invited a couple of high school students to give feedback. Hey, is this okay with you guys and stuff like that. So. And then, to my surprise, the next school year, I think it's August or July, they were like, uh, Sir Nins, we're gonna start the Python class. Uh, huh? Are you joking? Like, for real? Like, the, the, the government approved? <laughs> I'm like, uh, yes, sir. But uh, yeah, we need your help. Of course you need my help. <laughs> what do you need? Can you just look at the class, see the syllabus, observe, teach us how to improve? I'm like, ah, finally. Okay, you have my full attention. I want to thank this four person. Right? They were supposed to be here, actually. They're supposed to present all the amazing Python projects that we did, but uh, the government didn't allow them to go, by the way. So it's just too bad, right? But thanks to them, we had an official Python class. They supported me, and um, this was the game plan. I told them, hey, look, we're going to start 2020. We're going to implement this maybe on grade 7 and grade 8. I don't know, maybe divide the programming class into two, probably. So um, that's their proposed plan, and we just revised based on it. So basically, we had three, three courses. Programming one is for control uh, concepts, like variables and control flows. Programming two is like for data structures. Um, so I, I left the whole, I asked them to do the planning, and I'm just going to review it. Right Here, um, we attach those classes to a research class. So each of them has their own research subject, and depending on their grade level, we either require them to integrate programming in their projects or, you know, just encourage, but yeah. It was nice. So what did we actually learn from the whole experience? What happened? Yeah, but basically, it's a good job, right? So. Kudos to the teachers. However, we have some three key observations. Okay. Students really hate for loops. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what's up with for loops. They're like, uh, how, how, do you, how do you do the invariant thing again? It's like, oh, for those of you who are familiar with invariants, like loop invariants, right? And they're like, sir, I'm sorry, we don't understand. So we, we had a lot of time teaching them for loops, I think for the entire semester, just, just for loops. So we adjusted the course. Um, we also implement capstone projects. I'm gonna show you some capstone projects later. And then there's, of course, uh, there's the Rockstar developers. There's also Rockstar students whom, I don't know, for some reason doing ChatGPT already. I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm trying to integrate this to ChatGPT. I'm like, who taught you how to use that? Uh, YouTube. <laughs> okay, fine. Nice. But yeah, so we, took those key observations and we tried to improve the course. Okay. Um, all throughout the course, I think I, I mentioned that uh, 2017 to 2019, we had an approximately 10 projects that are coding related. But um, as of today, 
yeah, I just refer, I just checked again today because I asked them there's a new class. We had 10 successful programming class since 2020. And the amount of investigatory projects that utilize programming have basically exploded. Like all of them are like doing this uh, Arduino-based projects, some even are, you know, some are doing ChatGPT, and I'm like, you're, you're just in high school, you're doing ChatGPT, yeah, I'm so proud of you guys. But, uh, and, and some even took computer science in college, like the old students that I had, they're like, oh, sir, we're gonna take computer, uh, computer science in college, and I'm like, oh, sure, suffer. <laughs> so, it's fun, it's fun seeing a year's worth of work, it's, uh, this is literally like almost 10 years in the making, pay, you know, pay its dividend. And here are some of the achievements that the, here are some of the achievements that the schools have made. Like, uh, lately, they've been joining hackathons and like competitions with robot, robotics and stuff like that. And yeah, it's, it's just, I don't know. I feel so proud for them, right? And I think we have several ongoing initiatives. Again, I mentioned I'm from Australia, but I, I go back to the Philippines just for these initiatives, right? And I'm like, this is still an expensive stuff to do, but I'm, I'm totally fine with it. We have some advanced classes for students, right? Because some of them are really good. So we are, we're testing out advanced classes. And then we have events, local events at school, uh, robotics uh, competition in, in school level and we're trying to coordinate with local government officials so that the problems let's say in an agriculture sector will be solved by the students so the students before are like oh we don't know how to we don't know what to solve using Python and I'm like hold your beer oh, sorry they, they can't hold the beer because they're student hold your juice so I'm gonna I, I connected them to the local government and poof all the sorts of projects are popping in, which is nice. Um, yeah, as you can see here, I, I, they, did, they, they created the game. I didn't know they can do that. <laughs> when, when we like uh, check and like uh, the projects and like, what the? That's a game, bless you. Um, that's me trying to coordinate with the local officials, you know, to have school integrations. And this is the advanced class for the rockstar devs. I call them rockstar students, but yeah. So, yeah, looking ahead, we're looking more into building a resource, stockpiling more on Arduino, Raspberry Pis. Um, we want to take teachers and students to PyCons. Unfortunately, yeah, they weren't able to come. And then we want their efforts to be able to recognize. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm showing it to you. So that we can show to the government, hey, give us funds. We're doing something here. Now, Last part is the not so evil plan plan, okay? So my initial goal, I want time to myself because I'm, I'm, I'm too, you know, occupied with all the teaching and stuff, but yeah, I want to enable the high school, like the school teachers to be able to teach using themselves, right? But then I revised it. There are five schools in our city, and I want all of them to have a programming class. That's like a what? Five, ten-year goal, I guess. How will I do that? So, again, it seems that Python is easy to learn. We tried using JavaScript, and for God's sake, see, for, you know, teaching them. Didn't go well. And the demand is actually high, because... If the school gets recognized, they get more funding. Again, when we're talking about money, the, the schools are just, you know, they move really fast. And we need to keep up. Students need to keep up, right? Pen and paper is not enough. The focus areas would be, we want to transfer the knowledge that the pilot school learned to the other schools, right? We want to build the connections between the schools. And then we want to snowball. We have the momentum. We have to keep going. Don't stop, don't stop. That's gonna be our plan, right? And for the final push, this is my idea of the future, maybe five, 10 years of work. We wanna have citywide programming activities, each of the five schools competing with each other. 
And then um, we, have, we want to have like government offices giving research to high schools, solving problems using Python, machine learning. And we want to get noticed, right? If you shout at the forest, no one knows. That's the thing. So that's why I'm here. I hope you guys are maybe inspired, I guess. And questions? So yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, any questions from anyone? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, um, thank you very much for the Nino for that uh, presentation. It was very nice. Um, you need to work on your Australian accent because it doesn't sound very Aussie. <laughs> yeah, I just I'm I'm, I, I'm still working on it. I, I've been there since July. Forgive me. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm I'm from Australia. So. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, hey, yeah, let's um, have coffee sometime. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sounds good. Um, so, yeah, I, what you're doing in Philippines sounds awesome, and um, I. I've been in Japan for like 15 years, and uh, I, they also, they don't have anything like this in here. And I'm not sure about Australia, because I haven't been there for a while, but it sounds like you could, I mean, you, you started one school, five schools, then, but yeah, you know, I think, it, you know, what have you seen from other countries and what they're doing, and uh, what do you, do you think that, uh, you know, perhaps you could work with local governments like Australia or Japan to do similar things? Yeah, that's, that's actually a really nice question. Um, Australia's doing great, by the way. Rent prices are expensive. But um, other than that, we're good. So I think, as I've mentioned, we tried it before using HTML boot camps. Didn't work. Because the school has no incentive to do that, right? They're basically like, whatever, guys. We don't care. But then when we, when we showed them on the Python programming class, because once we're talking about money, my God, they move so fast. And I think that's what I see from other countries as well. I've seen several initiatives, for example, in Taiwan, or even in the Philippines, like for colleges, if you put some sort of, if you frame it in such a way saying that if you learn programming, you can join competitions. If you join competitions, your school ranking goes up. If your school ranking goes up, you get more funding. That's how I always frame it, right? Because if I just tell them, this is good for the student, they don't care. Oh my God, why do you, you're at school, you should care. But yeah, if I tell them, um, oh, this is gonna be good for the students and stuff like that, they usually say, oh yeah, we agree, we agree, but they don't do anything. So I always frame it in a way that this is gonna get you more funding. <laughs> if that's the short question, that's the short answer. The long answer would be like, in countries, I. I think, for Australia specifically. There needs to be a very good community, right? Python, uh, like Python community in Australia, I don't know why it disappeared for quite some time. <laughs> uh, I think they're still trying to rebuild uh, the whole development community, but we have a very active um, community in the Philippines. Thank you, Python PH guys. That's a chair for Python PH. Yeah, so um, we have a very good community in the Philippines, so if we, have, if we want support, it's easy to get speakers, it's easy to get the resource, right? And if the school is getting it for free, they'd have no reason to, you know, not do it, <laughs> right? So yeah, again, that, again, just frame it in such a way that they will have more funding. <laughs> That's the bottom line. So one quick follow-up, um, if I, um, you showed your curriculum and online just very like uh, high level. Is it possible to see it in a bit more granular? Is, do you have it somewhere? Or? Um, yeah, it's on the teachers. They are supposed to be here with me. I, you can send me a message. I can like, like give it uh, to you. Oh, that, yeah, that'll be good. I'll, I'll be, I'm quite interested. Too, so. Yeah, sure. sure. Uh, I think you. I can just add one more point to the question you asked, right? Like uh, there are, uh, for many PyCons on the local chapter, whether it is uh, PyCon Philippine, uh, last month we had done PyCon India. So for every of uh, uh, PyCons, we are doing some diverse initiatives. We call it as Anglerner workshops, especially for schools. So uh, the same activity which Ninja is doing, a uh, lot of PyCons are doing. 
so they go to they select few schools they go to schools and they'll uh, do workshops on that stuff so that is a core initiative from the pycon itself so i mean a lot of pycons uh, will uh, not follow because of lot a lot of logistics and yeah, the logistics. other issues <laughs> but i agree but many like in, in india we have done last month the, we got humongous response like we uh, for the england workshop we did in 10 cities in every city we touched 500 plus attendees we covered 5000 plus uh, kids uh, we trained them in raspberry pis and the yeah, stuff that's nice. in the span of like uh, a month on month and off so a lot of pycons are doing it and i really like this approach and uh, yeah thank you thank you once again for the you no know, uh, insight full and you know uh, thought provoking uh, thing <laughs> so really thing. amazing yeah any more questions to nins okay we good yeah you can approach me anytime by the way so thank you thank you so much everyone thank you nins thanks